All right, my cats, got another unboxing for you today. This time I'm taking a look at the Rotolite Neo, the Rotolite RL38 Stealth, and also the Rotolite Light Stand for the RL48, which makes the Stealth completely useless without it. We'll get into that in a second. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming over and watching my channel. I'm getting views all over the world, and it's really exciting, you know, just to see it streaming in. Really excited, and uh, just want to say thank you for your support, and I'll continue pumping these out for you. Anyway, let's start off with the Neo. Push this aside. Okay, we'll take a look here. This is the Rotolite Neo. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Rotolite makes some pretty interesting LED lights for use for photography and for videos. Uh, here's an example of a mounted right on top of a cannon here. It's much better than, say, your traditional LED lights because Rotolite manages to have a non flickering. Uh, LED. Why this is important? Well, when you take photos, sometimes you know LEDs they flicker at a frequency, and if you don't have a constant on, when you take a photo, if your shutter speed's pretty high, or you're taking video and your shutter speed is high, you're gonna see a flickering effect, which you really don't want. You see it a lot in car videos when the LED it flickers. It seems like the headlights are on and off, on and off, on and off. But uh, you won't have that with the Rolite Neo. This comes at a price though. Um, Picked this up off on Amazon. I paid around four hundred dollars plus um, tax on it. It's quite expensive. It is a bit out of the price range for a lot of people, and even myself, it took me a long time to think I'm making this investment. And eventually, you know, I just bit the bullet and I bought this. But yeah, this is a Rotolite -like Neo. Um, it's made from the UK, of course, which might help to explain why it's four hundred dollars US. It did win some awards, and I'll show you some photos I took later on. You understand why this has been such a awesome winning light. All right. Take a look here. Mm -hmm. Contents shows you that it comes with the light itself, it's mounting screw for hot shoes, a carry bag, some filters, and an AC adapter. All right. Take a look in the back. Okay, what do we have here? Let's zoom in. Um, pretty basic, just a description of what the Rotolite is. It tells you that's powered by six AA batteries. Um, yeah, some examples there. Not too much. Cinesex. Oh, Cinesex. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> More of the same there. Oh, here we are. Uh, yep, true aperture dimming, sin SFX, flicker free, that's what I was referring to. Uh, six double A's in three hours. Um, you can change the color temperature, soft light output, what the beam angle is at, how far output, accu color, and yeah. Okay, nothing else really. Alright, let's open this up. itself. Open it up. And okay, we see the AC adapter here. Has a nice uh, Velcro cord so you can close it and open it. And here's the other end of the AC adapter. Alright. And then we have the road light unit itself side for now and then we have here a filter pack that's it we'll throw these aside okay so not too much to it you have the AC adapters you have the box let's take a look at what's in here this is a nice pouch carrier roller light, and I suppose, and the roller light's in there. You can uh, definitely mount this to your belt if you want. You can stick a belt loop through there, or it doesn't have it on both sides, but I suppose you can mount this to like a, your camera bag. It'd be pretty heavy, I imagine, to hold it. Reflective strip. 
Um, so here you can put pens or batteries. I put batteries in it. I will put batteries in it myself. A small pouch here. I guess you can put the AC adapter in. But you totally can if you figure out space with the cord. Stuff it back there perhaps. Yeah, you can totally do it if you want to. Takes a bit of organization though. All right, so here's a roto light itself. Okay, put this aside for now. Take a look at the rest of the bag. And here, it's nice and padded. So, oh, bit of a silica gel there. Keep it nice and dry. But yeah, it's a pretty nice design. Keep it dry. Away from the elements. You can adjust this too. This Velcro is like detachable. It's not a bad pouch. I don't think I'll actually use it though. Alright, let's take a look at the Rotolite itself. Okay, lots of LEDs here. I forgot exactly how many. I think there's 100 or 200 of them. Take this off. This is what keeps the filters in. Wow, it's really smooth. This piece is made of aluminum right here. Put this back for now. This locks in place. Here's a hot, the hot shoe adapter. Back of the unit. Knobs here, the power switch. This is the plug for the AC adapter to go right here. Whoops. Here we are. Goes right in there. And did I just break this? I don't. I hope not. Yep. Okay, so this is a bit hard to get back in there. Uh, I would not peel this off the wrong way. This, it doesn't really stick in well. So I'm just gonna take this off. Okay, getting right back to it. Uh, this is where you put six AAAs. The batteries go in like so. Put them opposite of each other. And it's a bit hard getting out the last one because you're pulling out. Oh, it was on already. So let's close the battery cover. Okay, put this back in. All right, so you push this button to turn it on and you use this to adjust color temperature. So you go from very warm, 3150. And you can dial this all the way up and either let you spin it fast or you can spin it slowly to go by 10 degrees at a time to 6300 very white very cool light okay and you can just power output too right here all the way to zero so for example go from zero all the way to a hundred percent. There we go. And there are different ways you can program the light too. Um, you can set it to like flash and strobe, like a police light, for example. Uh, many different ways. Honestly, I don't use those settings. I mainly use it for photography and. I just keep it at usually one light setting, depending on what I want to do. If I want to make my subject look like they're dead, I go with the blue light. If I want to make them look more alive, I use the warm one, and everything in between. Alright, this is the filter pack right here. This one is the one that comes with the roto light. And it comes with five different filters. They're very they're more of the basic ones, I suppose, and this is a pain in the ass to take out. Come on now. Okay. So there's white diffusion, cosmic, co uh, cosmetic peach, half white diffusion, and magenta. So quite a few in here that you can use. Uh, me personally, again, I only use the... 
me personally, I really only use the one that diffuses light because you don't want too harsh a light on your subject whenever you do that. Especially when you take photos of uh, women, it exposes too much of the imperfections on your skin, but if you use this white one, it kind of hides it and smooths it out. Makes a much softer light. Don't lose this. I mean, if you lose this, you can just simply go to Michael's or wherever you need to buy a piece of thin colored paper and cut it out and put it in. But all right, to put it on, it goes like this. You just twist off the top here. You place this in. The center aluminum piece kind of locks it in place. And then you replace the colored filter on. I'm sorry, you place the plastic on there. There you go. And the effect is this. You can kind of see a little bit here. It'll make a much softer light in whatever you take a photo of. And again, I'll include some photos. Now the way that the row light achieves color changes is it has an array of yellow lights and an array of white lights. And you can notice that as I change it up, it will power on the white ones and the yellow ones will power down. And that is how I achieve the different color temperatures. To get the maximum light output, I suppose you would kind of put it right in the middle there. Right around there, around what, 4700. This produces the most amount of light on any situation that you want to use it on. If say, in my case, I use it exploring, I mount it on my A6300. This gives me the most illumination that I need for any place I go into. Again, it depends on what you use is and what kind of mood you want to create. Now I also got this, um, and this was completely stupid of me. This is an additional filter pack of different colors, as you can see right here. Look, you have your red hues, magentas, to your cyans, to your bit of a green, to your oranges, and more of your yellows, okay? This was a waste of money. This cost me $39 shipped from Amazon. I suggest you do not buy this. If you really must, okay, buy it. But I would not buy this again, and I regret it actually getting it. Different colors that you can have, you know, fancy names, Hollywood Frost, pinks, reds. I mean, come on. They could simply call it light blues, red, pink, turquoise, orange, Hell, I don't know. Yeah, don't buy this. I used this once on a shoot, and the only one I used was the one on top here that I put back. This red, that's it. I used this red filter once for about 15 minutes, and I never touched this again. Should you buy it? Again, it depends on your needs, but I would say it was not worth it. It was definitely not worth it. $39 for a pack of paper. Don't make the mistake I did. I'm here to make different mistakes so that you don't have to, as my viewers. Now, this whole kit with a rotolite, I also got this handle. This I also got on Amazon for about, I don't remember, $10 or $15. It's totally worth it. It's made of aluminum, it's nice and sturdy. It comes with a foam grip. And then you can just twist this on right here like this. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can hold it like this. This is great for when you're doing a shoot. If you're just by yourself, you can at least hold it up. If you are using this by yourself though, I suggest you actually get like a light stand instead and use that as an extension pole because this will not be close enough to your target. If you're using say an 85 millimeter lens like the bodice, for something like a 55 millimeter or 50 millimeter, that's perfectly fine. But anything beyond that, I would definitely suggest getting a light extension pole and mounting this on there. Now, one downside of this though, because yeah, I generally have clean hands, I think. So it's nice and grippy, but you can't really wash this material. So a few times I've asked people if they can assist me when I'm out in public. And when I got the light back from I held it and it felt a bit clammy and you can't really wash this but otherwise it's a really great accessory I would definitely recommend getting this one I'll post a link below on how to what exactly it is I got 
Okay, switching below to it's the Rotolite Neo's younger brother, the Rotolite RL48 Stealth. Now, this did come out before the Rotolite Neo, so it explains why it doesn't have many of the features that the Rotolite Neo does have. Now, it's kind of bare bones, it's a bit basic for LED light. What it was designed for is that you can mount it on a microphone, like one of the Rode mics, and just leave it on there. That way, wherever you're pointing your camera at, you can not only can you take video and have your subject well illuminated, but you can also record quality sound as well. One caveat though, if you mount it on a shock mount on a Rode mic, it will limp down like a sad penis. It is not recommended at all to do that for a lot of people. It'll flop around and it'll actually cause a bit of noise in your sound to develop too from it bobbing up and down as you walk. Now again, yes, yes, light winning. And if you notice, this roto light does not come with the centerpiece illustrated here. They do give you a picture of what it would look like here though. Uh, let's look at packaging, just typical, I can this is called blister pack. Uh, now it's supposed to come with a cover too, it looks like. You know, exciting lighting, yes, yes. Color filter pack, yes, accessory pouch, roto light stand. If you notice, it does not come with the roto light stand. These are optional roto light accessories. This is how it's sold to you. Now, having already paid $100 for this alone, it's a bit unacceptable that it does not come with the accessories required to actually, say, mount it on a hot shoe for your camera. And there's a bit more that I believe Rotolite kind of teases us about. I think it's a bit of a cruel joke. I'll explain in, in a moment. Let's open this up. Alright, here we are. Okay, look, here's a Rotolite itself. You get this. Put this down for now. And that's it. Nothing else. Okay? If you notice, this illustration has a cover right here for filters, but hold on. Do you see anything here? Nope, maybe it's inside somehow. Open this, you pry this open like this. And right here is the terminals for the batteries. Let's put this down for now. And here, look at this. Inside the Rotolite comes these filter packs, okay? And there are different ones in here. If you want to change the light output, you need to add these filters on. Which, I suppose, you can't really say that it's stuck in one light output, but that kind of is the case if you need to use these filters in order to change the color temperature. Again, this was... Again, this did come out before the Rotolite Neo, so it explains it. And this is a quarter of the price of the Neo itself, at $100 US. But you can add these on, and then you can change the color temperature. But, you ask, how am I supposed to do that? There's nothing here for me to mount this on. There's nothing here either. It's not as though you're supposed to rip this off and use it itself. No, you can't. Look, I thought maybe this was even a cruel joke by Rotolite. You know, we'll give you the filters, we'll give you the light itself, but you have actually no way of using it. And how do you want to mount this on a tripod? You can't. You would look like a fool walking around with this in your finger. All right, let's talk about how to put in a battery first before we get onto the accessory pack, which I felt like I was forced to buy. Okay, battery's going like this. Stick it in here. Stick this in. Stick this in. All right, and you put this on top. There's these little wedges right here that you need to line it up. And you just slide it in to rotate it, and it's locked, okay? And then you push this button to turn it on. Now this is a constant fixed output. You cannot adjust the power output on it. The only way you, you would do a change temperature is to use those filters, which again, you can't, unless you tape them on. Okay, this turns off. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe it's an add accessory pack, you know? If I purchase, say, the Rotolite stand will come with the cover itself. Or worst case scenario, I will have to cut this plastic out and use that. 
So, you know, I bought one. I bought this from the Amazon warehouse deals actually because this was about $50. I didn't want to pay another $50 for something that, you know, what parts I was supposed to come with this in the first place. Uh, I think the warehouse deal was maybe $5 cheaper. I did take a gamble of this and, you know, it, it was fine because look, it's, the parts are still nice and new. The packaging's a little beat up, but who cares, right? What you notice here, you have the Rotolite medallion toe, nice aluminum piece. Then you have the pieces assembled in the stand, the screw, the hot shoe mount, and this is for actually mounting that. Let's take a look at how these go together. Okay, first you take these two, and then you pop the screw out. Put this piece on the back here. Take the screw, you toss it right in the middle. Take a screwdriver, screw that on. Okay, when well that's nice and tight. Rotolite itself. You have to stick this piece in the front first, okay? And then you take this lollipop piece, the honeycomb side down, and you close it like that. That mounts on there. And then you have a standard female thread for cameras. You take this bottom piece out. this and you screw it on there okay and just to show you and just to show you you can use the handle I mentioned earlier as well for this okay smaller lollipop all right, here it is mounted on. Feels pretty good, nice weight, good color too, it matches, isn't that awesome? All right, um, so my main reservation about the Rotolite RL48 is that, well, it doesn't come with a plastic cover, so the filters are useless. That said though, I have emailed Rotolite and Jessica over in the Rotolite office it has been pretty uh, good getting back to me, and she says, well, that must have been an oversight. Let me send you out a cover immediately. I'm just waiting for that to come in, but once that arrives, the filters will be usable. But as a whole, still, you know, a hundred bucks for the Rotolite itself, and then you have to pay an additional 50 for the centerpiece and the mount. And the handle, which is $10, but that's really, you know, completely up to you of what you want to do. This by itself, $160, it's still a very expensive package, I would say, for a light. It, it is very quality. Um, here's a photo of what it looked like for a shoot. Now I use this for a um, secondary light. I use a road like Neo as a primary light. Still very good results, but you know, honestly, I didn't. I haven't really used a road light RL48 Stealth much. What I've been using 95% of the time would be the Neo. I mean, it's much more versatile. The power output is a lot greater. You know, people just love this thing when I take you to, um, with me to say conventions or any public outing where there are other people who are taking pictures. I hesitate to say photographer since everyone's a photographer these days, just as high like how everyone's a model these days. But anyways, yeah, um, if the price point were not so high, I think a lot more people would buy the Rotolite Neo. But because it's $400, that is really hard for most people to, to do. I mean, my first camera was $400, Sony A58. So, you know, of a lot of people, they might rather save it towards an actual bigger, better camera or some other gear instead. I mean, look, especially if you're living on minimum wage, let's face it, 400 bucks is going to be one week's worth of pay for you. So it is quite a lot. It's certainly more in a premium segment. 
A lot more affordable would be the Stealth, but the Stealth is limited in what it can do in terms of versatility. I mean, look, you're taking the cover off every single time to adjust the color temperature, or to just change the color itself. The Rotolite, hey, you know, at least I can make it cooler or brighter on the fly, like literally. You know, change the color temperature, change the brightness, output. But you are paying a lot, remember, it's three times for this. And then for the filter pack, which I do not recommend you buy at all. It's around $40. I'll put that in the link in the description if you do want to take a look at it. If you do want to buy it, go ahead. But again, I'm telling you, it's not worth it to get that. Now, overall, what would I do? Well, honestly, I might not buy the Rotolite again. Um, there are models that are out there now, such as the newer, which I personally don't have myself, but if I need to buy another LED light, I would certainly buy that and try it out. I think for $40 or $80, you get similar features. It's not as sturdy, of course, the construction is not as good, and it doesn't look as sexy as this, but hey, you know, you're looking at $80 versus $400 versus $150, so it's kind of a... You know, which one are you gonna do? Now, I will say though, I've had amazing results with the Rotolite Neo. Here are some photos right here, different shoots I did. Versus, say, a conventional flash, is that, well, the flash, you know, you might be mounting on the different color filters, etc. And you might be adjusting positions, you are playing a power output, you're trying to see, you know, what settings you, you should use, you know, should I, like, adjust by a third, or should I lower by a third, what should I do? And that's very time consuming for anyone who's ever tried to use um, a flash to get the proper setup for any type of photo that you're trying to take. With the Neo, however, you know, instead of, say, setting it up, setting one position, taking a flash, setting that position, taking a flash, seeing what works, what doesn't, what the picture's photo is going to look like, I can instead go in my electronic viewfinder on the camera screen and just look, depending on which way I position the light, how an object is going to look. So, for example, let's say I'm just taking a photo of this. You know, I know that the light's going to look like this from this angle like that from that angle, like that, you know, and in that previous photo that I showed you, what might have taken me 10, 20, or 30 shots for me to get the settings right to what I feel like I'm happy with, I can just do it on a fly, I can just go rotate around, rotate around subject and see what I like, and then just take a photo from there. So again, $400, it's hard to swallow. It is a great light. If you can afford it, go ahead. $150, I would say pass on this. Um, again, now, limitations to these things. This thing is useless beyond 10 feet, and this one's useless also beyond 10 feet. So if you're much further away than that, you're gonna have to go through a flash, or you're gonna need to get one of the bigger road light setups, such as the Anova, but that's going about I think a thousand or two thousand dollars, which is just too crazy for anyone but say a professional to use. And those are pretty big too for setup. It's something like the entire size of this. You're not gonna carry that around either. Now, you can boost the range of the Neo if you buy the barn doors, but that's a hundred and fifty dollars for accessory or a hundred dollars if you get it. I'll put a link in the description below again. But that's still a lot of money for basically, you know, four flaps of tin or aluminum. It's a lot of money to actually get this to work the way that you want it. I've been only using it like this, mounted on top of the hot shoe for my camera, and it's been working great for me, or I'll mount it on the grip right here. It's fine, you know? It doesn't completely replace the flash though, and it's always important if you do a professional shoot, always bring flashes with you, especially ones with remote triggers, because, well, the flash will always have a greater range than the LED light, and if you're taking, say, like an event photo, you kind of do want to keep the flash on you still, so at least you can do things that reflect off the walls and get like an entire group. If you have an entire group, more than four or five people, you're not really gonna get a good photo of them with the Rotolite Neo. Just keep that in mind. This is more for personalized single subject shoots, LED lights. Flashes are more for photos where you're taking more than one subject or if you're at a distance. Again, 
close up single subjects, great for LED lights. Anything more than two people, I would say, you definitely want to get a flash, especially if you're more than distance greater of 10 feet. Okay, everyone, again, thanks for watching. Um, please throw me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you like this and I'll definitely try to get more content out for you. I have a lot more unboxing videos along the way and also check out my abandoned exploration videos too where we're planning to go to a lot of haunted houses coming up. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely subscribe for that. Thanks for watching.